Hey everybody, this is Games Plus James, and welcome back to our retro first person shooter tutorial series. So we've got the basics of our shooting system all working, the only thing we really need now is something to actually shoot at that isn't just walls in our little level here. So we're going to go ahead and create an enemy to use. So I'm going to right click here in our scene, or in our hierarchy first of all, to create an enemy object, like so. Then we're going to go to our art folder into enemies and I'm going to grab this skull guy here and drop him in here and I'm going to make this a child of the enemy so we're going to make sure it's at zero 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 and then the enemy itself will also be at zero 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 for now just to center it and then let's move it up to round about here should be okay okay so we've got our enemy obviously first thing we want to do is make it so that our enemy is looking at our player rather than just hanging out on the ground down there so let's go to our enemy and our sprite render and I'm going to add the billboard like so. Then the next thing we're going to do is give this a collider. So I'm going to add a circle collider 2D. So this is just in case our player gets close to our little enemy dude. So I'm going to make this uh, have a smaller radius like so. Then we're going to hit play and now we've got our enemy. So we, we're, we've, we're starting to get things going here. Now we want to be able to make sure that we can actually shoot this guy. Now, as we said before, our shooting system is based on 3D physics rather than 2D physics. So if we want to be able to shoot this guy, we won't be able to interact with the circle collider we're creating here. So we need to create an area that we can actually shoot him. So for that, I'm going to go to the skull object. I'm going to add a capsule collider not a 2d one but a capsule collider like so and if i switch to a 3d view here you can see what it does is well at the moment it looks like a circle but that's simply because um of the way it is set up but what we're going to do is change the radius of it down like that and now you can see although it's a 3d object if i switch back to 2d view uh, in this view here you can see it's taking up this little area here like this. Uh, I'm going to change the height down a little bit like that. I think that's okay. And the center, I'm going to move the center down like so. So it's just like roughly touching the ground. So technically you won't be able to shoot the sides of this guy. Uh, we, we could change that if we wanted to. We could increase the radius like that. Uh, but I think it's kind of okay to, you have to aim a bit more central to be able to shoot him. But basically anywhere in this object we're going to be able to shoot. Now, the advantage with doing this on the skull object which has the billboard on it is this whole object is going to be rotated around so it won't just be facing into the ground it'll actually be vertical so if i hit play now you'll see you can see the capsule collider is now rotated so that it's facing upwards if i switch back out of 3d view you can see if i move it around you can see the green outline and it's rotated around with the sprite which means whatever we way we set it up in our 2D view when the game is not running. Whatever way we set it up here that is visible, that means we'd be able to shoot that way in our with our little guns in general. So for example now if I press play, run over and look at this guy, I can shoot and bang we get impacts where we want them. So that's great, that's exactly what we want to happen. The next thing we want to happen next is well the next thing we want to happen next uh, is we want to give this enemy a script that will allow us to damage him when we shoot him so let's go I'm gonna highlight our enemy first of all I'm gonna to go to script folder right click and create a new C sharp script that we'll call enemy controller and then oh I spelled that wrong I just realized let me delete that and create a new one because there is a T in controller. Enemy controller, there we go. Doesn't really matter if I spelled it wrong, but it's, it's probably better to keep trying to spell things properly in the world. Uh, okay, so we've attached that to our enemy object now. And I'm gonna open this up and we're gonna add a couple of variables up the top. So I'm gonna create a public int for health and uh, actually, for the moment, we'll leave it at just that. So we're going to make him move around and stuff as well, but we'll just deal with our health to start off with. So 
basically what we want to do is down here we're going to add a new function that we'll call public void take damage and basically we're going to call this function whenever a bullet hits against our enemy so here we're going to say our health will be minus minus so we're taking away some health so health minus minus basically just means take one away from our health let's set our health by default to be equal to three for example so we'll take three shots to kill our enemies so we're going to take away health and then we're going to do a check and say if our health is less than or equal to zero so basically if our health goes down to zero or for some reason below zero which shouldn't happen um we're going to destroy the game object we're going to remove them from the scene okay so that's all fine and dandy but how can we actually make sure that our bullets are damaging our enemy so for that we can use much like we did for the player we can add a tag of enemy so here we can go here and we can see there's no enemy tag actually here so what we're going to go to is add tag and we're going to hit this little plus symbol and we're just going to create the enemy tag like so and then back on our enemy on the skull itself we're going to add the tag enemy like that and then what I'm going to do is go back into our scripts actually we need to go to our player script specifically because our player is what controls what we're shooting so I'm going to go into our player controller and down here when we uh, hit against something we're going to do an extra check and see is that an enemy that we've hit so we can say if hit dot transform dot tag equals enemy so if we've hit the enemy uh, and always with the, as always with this stuff we need to make sure that's capitalized the exact same as it is in our tags over here uh, and we're going to say then if we hit the enemy well we want to get the component of the enemy controller and tell it to run the take damage function but we need to remember that if we go over here what we'll be hitting is this capsule collider here which this object doesn't have the enemy controller script attached to it it only has the enemy controller script on the enemy holder object because that makes more sense of where to put it so what we're going to do is back in here we're going to say oh, oh that's the wrong script we're in there we go we're in the right script here so if we have detected that the tag is enemy then we're going to say okay the hit dot transform dot parent so parent will be the parent object of our transform so that'll be we've hit the skull so then go to the parent object which is the enemy and then what we say from here is parent dot get component enemy controller which is the script that controls our enemy's health and we're going to say take damage so call the take damage function that we create and that's it that's basically all we need to do so we can save this let's go back into unity and hopefully this should all work the way we want it to so i can shoot him three times and he will die so i can go oh where's our mouse there we go bang 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 and there we go that's our enemy dead perfect now our enemy dying like that doesn't look great we don't want him just disappearing we want a little effect to happen so i'm going to create a very simple effect using our explosion here so much like we did for our bullet impact i'm going to create an explosion down here and we're going to call this we'll just call this explosion very quickly i'm going to create an animation for us do 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 call this explosion and we're going to drag these in one by one onto each five frame interval like so uh, one two three four five one two three four five i lost count of where i was for a second there pop that like that and this guy goes here and then we're going to turn on record go to this point turn off the sprite renderer here go to one second turn it back on and then we turn back off record again and then we're going to destroy over time this so this is going to last this time we want it to last about three quarters of a second which should be about here uh, actually no we'll set it to be 0.9 of a second that'll do and then we're also going to add the billboard script to make sure that it always faces the player we're going to make this a prefab boom like that 
get rid of our explosion and then if we go over here on our enemy controller uh, no actually yeah no it is the enemy controller yeah so when our health goes down below zero we're going to instantiate that effect so up here we need a reference to it so public game object explosion and when we destroy the game object we'll also instantiate explosion at transform dot position and transform dot rotation and the rotation doesn't really matter too much because we know it's going to uh, rotate and face wherever it should because of the billboard script okay so we'll save that we'll go back in on our enemy we're going to assign that explosion like so we hit play and this time if I explode them one two three boom we get a nice explosion okay so we've got our enemies exploding the way we want to so let's start moving them around so to make it interesting we're only going to move this guy when he gets within a certain distance of the player so within when the player is in range of him he'll go okay the player's nearby I'm going to move towards the player so for that what I'm going to do is go back into our scripts and over here we're going to add a few variables in for our enemy controller so first thing is we're going to need to check hey how close is our player so we'll say public float player range so this is going to be how far it is from how far it is that the player needs to be or how close the player needs to be before we start moving towards them if we're going to move our little guy around we want to use the physics system because we want to make sure that um He doesn't walk through walls or anything like that. We want him to bump up against walls as he's going. So we're going to create a public rigid body 2D reference. So this will just be called the rigid body. Then we need to know how fast we want this guy to move. So public float move speed. Okay. So then in our update loop, we're going to say if vector tree dot distance so vector tree dot distance is a very simple way of checking the distance between two points so we're going to say check the distance between the current transform dot position which is the position of the enemy that this script is attached to between that enemy and the player controller dot instance dot transform dot position so we're going between the position of our current enemy and the player himself so however far that distance is we want to check is that less than the player range and if it is less than the player range then we're going to say okay well we want to move in the direction of the player so how do we work out what direction the player is facing well there's a very simple formula we can use well i say formula it's <laughs> it's taking one thing away from another so we're just going to say vector tree player direction is equal to we take the position of the object we want to look at so player controller dot instance dot transform dot position and we take away our current position so transform dot position and that's it that's all we have to do to know which direction the player is facing and then what we have to do what we do with that is we apply that to our rigid body so the rigid body dot velocity equals the direction that the player is in so player direction and we're going to multiply that by our move speed so how fast we're moving now one weird thing that can happen is uh, with a player direction uh, value like this so if our player is say to the right of our uh, enemy then our player direction will be one on the x-axis if the player is directly above the enemy then it'll be a one above but what actually happens is with this because we're just minusing this value we could end up with the player being at five on the x-axis away and three on the y-axis up and what happens then is oh our enemy would move super fast upwards and to the right rather than just multiplying uh, the maximum of one by the move speed we'd be multiplying five by move speed and we'd end up in a situation where 
the further the enemy is away from the player, the faster they move. But as they get closer, they'd be like super slow. So they'd be super duper fast when they're far away, but super slow when they're really close. And that's not good. So instead, what we're going to do is say player direction dot normalized. And what that does is basically limit it so the maximum distance away it can be is one. So it'll only ever be the speed that we're or the value that we're multiplying our move speed by will only be one on the x axis or one on the y axis at most. So it can be less than that, which will be fine. That doesn't really matter too much. But the most it can be is that. So that stops our enemy moving around like crazy. Okay, so that's that sorted. So I can just save this and we'll go back in and see this in action. So if I go here, go to our enemy, we're going to give him a rigid body. 2D. Then we're going to add that in there. Our move speed. We don't want to move as fast as the player, so we're going to set that to be 3, I think should be okay. So now if I press play, we should definitely be in range of the player and he'll come running at the player. Okay, that's way too fast. I'm going to move away. He just keeps on coming. So he, <laughs> I'm, I feel like I'm not getting quite far enough away from this guy. So we're just going to stop this for a second. Um, let's say his move speed. I'm going to turn this way down because that's way too fast. Let's change a couple of things we'll actually we'll change the player range down to five just to make sure there's not something weird going on i think i wasn't able to get far enough away from him so if i move away now whoa he's flying off into the distance because we haven't oh, we didn't set his gravity scale to be zero so we'll do that first of all but now if i press play if i move away from him so he's left kind of drifting so what happens is he gets close to me and applies his velocity to start moving towards me but then when i get out of range his velocity stays at whatever it was set to last so we want to make sure when we stop this running here when we are not in range so if our vector distance is not less than player range we'll say else the rb dot velocity equals zero uh, wait, not, not, sorry, not zero, is equal to vector two dot zero. Okay, we'll save that. We'll go back in. And there we go. We've got our enemy now coming towards us. Watch out, he's going to get us. He's going to destroy us. But no, what we're going to do is shoot him up and he just gets destroyed. So perfect. Our enemy is working the way we want him to. He's coming chasing after us and being all spooky and scary. So the next thing we need to do is make him deal some damage and make him actually be able to shoot at us too. And we're going to do that in the next episode. So thanks for watching. I'll be back soon with more tutorial goodness and more exciting adventures in our retro first person shooter.